Thank you for staying with us. And we're having a fascinating conversation with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Joe, we've been doing a lot of talking about the brain, the mind, the journey, a little bit about your journey. When you were a kid, was there anything that you really wanted a burning desire to do? You know, as a kid, I was just one of those young people that always had a thousand questions. And um, I always investigated the answers for myself. I was one of those kids that loved to look up answers. And, and, uh, and, and I, I just I had this weird, quirky thing where I loved to dovetail information together. Mm -hmm. I'd, lo I'd love to take unrelated topics and somehow you know, dovetail them together to a greater understanding. And as a kid, I was always interested in uh, the brain, believe it or not, and interested in uh, the mind, and interested in human potential, and and uh, kind of kind of got me going off in this very Eastern point of view at a very early age, studying yoga and martial arts, and and. Uh, studying all kinds of Eastern beliefs and, and mm -hmm. it was healthy for me because I think that um, I went from this very mechanistic model of the way reality appeared. It opened my eyes to this more of a vitalistic understanding that particles are alive and things have an awareness and and uh, I was fascinated by that as a kid and, and it, it opened a lot of doors for me. Okay. What age would you have been that this fascination started kicking in? <laughs> oh, probably 12 or 13. And, uh, and of course, you know, I read some really fun books at an early age and, and uh, uh, really, really, uh, really it opened, it opened my eyes uh, from, from 12 or 13. And I think our identity begins to form around that early teen age and, and, uh, all the things, you know, I came across this book when I was 16 years old, and all the things I was interested in were all considered, you know, uh, avant-garde or unusual or unproven. And I love that idea because it had me delve into it a little bit further. So, all, by the way, all those things today are considered, you know, mainstream yeah. beliefs. And so... Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of dabbled in a lot of things, and I think all of those things helped me to, to uh, piece, piece together different elements of what I'm interested in. Okay. When did you decide to do chiropractory and why? Oh, well, it was kind of funny. I was, as, as a 15-year-old kid, I, was, I know I was very academically oriented, and, and, uh, and I, was, I wanted to know what I wanted to do at 15 or 16, and... and uh, of course, I was going to go to school to study medicine, and I had all the grades in place, and had all the all the opportunity to do it. And um, started reading about chiropractic, and started reading about this vitalistic model of the the life force and the central nervous system and the brain and the spinal cord. And of course, I was just starting to study yoga at that time, and it all made sense to me. And you know, the principle in chiropractic is the power that made the body heals the body. And I believe in that very strongly. I don't think there's any healing that takes place that isn't a spiritual healing, that doesn't involve a vitalistic energy. And um, so my dad, I asked my dad to take me to a seminar with other doctors of chiropractic. I was 16 years old, and he took me to this uh, chiropractic seminar, and I participated with all the doctors and learned all the material, and went to another seminar. and and. Uh, I was on my way. I mean, I, uh, you know, I went to undergraduate school and, you know, studied pre-med and then went to chiropractic college and yeah, I just was clear the moment I uh, understood the concepts, the philosophy. I was, I was on board. Okay, and then you had a bike accident. Yeah, I and got run over by a truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I um, just was in a triathlon and and uh, wasn't actually going to do the race, last minute decided to do it, and uh, got run over by a truck uh, on my bicycle. Uh, the truck was going 55 miles an hour, and uh, the woman that hit me in this Bronco, in this SUV, uh, either her reflexes were bad or she didn't know that she hit me, but she drug me down the road quite a ways, and, and uh, 
and and anyway, I won't wind up breaking six bones in my back, and the diagnosis was pretty poor. And it was a turning point in my life because I had to take everything that I studied, you know, everything that I learned, everything that I believed in, and forego the conventional route, mm -hmm. which I don't recommend a lot of people do. But uh, this was me, and. Um, I had a pretty good understanding of spinal biomechanics and pretty good understanding of what was possible. Good understanding of the subconscious mind at the time and and uh, I decided to take a chance. I decided after four opinions from four of the leading surgeons in Southern California to pass on the surgery and uh, I began to uh, use my mind and use this energy, this innate intelligence within every person, thought if I could contact it, I could actually get it to work for me. And I spent four hours a day connected and just working. And how long did it take to get back to wellness? Well, they told me it would take six months to a year and I'd have to wear a body cast and <clears throat> if I could ever, ever walk again, they didn't think I would. And uh, I was back in my office seeing patients in 10 weeks, no body oh, cast or yeah. nothing. And uh, the thing was about it all, I mean, you know, that moment in my life, those, those, um, that experience in my life was pretty self-determining because, uh, you know, when you're laying in bed, mm. you know, and confronting all these um, thoughts, real or imagined, you don't ever know at that time. I think the worst of human suffering is indecision, and, and once I made that decision that I wasn't going to have the surgery, I started getting very clear. When I started getting some feedback and started feeling better and started feeling sensations and started uh, having uh, physiological changes, I knew that I was on to something, and then there was nobody that was going to tell me and that there was any other way. and, and uh, uh, I just made a deal with myself that if I was ever able to walk again, I'd spend the rest of my life studying the mind-body connection. And mm. That's kind of what my life's been about. It's interesting, isn't it, that people that are out there doing this work are often confronted with a huge life-changing situation that asks them to, okay, now really walk the talk. Well, you have to. Yeah. I mean, you have to go from 100 miles an hour to zero. Mm. And I was a 25-year-old kid living in Southern California. I mean. I had the I had a great life, mm -hmm. and uh, you know had a great practice and had a, a great nucleus of friends and I was free and and uh, this was a real inconvenience for me you mm -hmm. know it was a real inconvenience and by the same means in hindsight I had to it, that's what it took for me to stop I think and ask some really big questions who am I you know where am I going what is life well you know how did I get here mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think I would have ever asked those questions at the pace I was going I mean I don't I don't think I would have even had the sensitivity or the sensibility to ask the questions at the time mm. okay got a lot more questions and I'll okay. leave one more segment <laughs> come back with us for the last part of our conversation with Joe see you soon <laughs> 